Moon Palace, Chapter Thirteen. Maylene woke up in a dimly lit room with pungent smells of mildew. She cringed and noticed Wei Long sitting by the window watching her. He stood up and said, "Sorry," and opened the windows. I hardly noticed it any more. Maylene looked around and frowned. Where am I? My apartment. Maylene raised her eyebrows and scanned the room. There were two tall windows with a fainted window view of the skyline. The windows seemed out of proportion with the size of the room, as if the space was once part of a larger room. She sat up from an old ripped couch, and felt a pressure in her head. She squinted her eyes. "You okay?" he asked. "Just a little headache," she replied, rubbing one of her temples. There were sounds of droplets behind her. She looked over her shoulder and saw a small kitchen between two doors. A light bulb was hanging down from the plastered ceiling. Above a sink, along with a small counter and a portable burner, Maylene stood up and looked out the window. "You got a nice view of the skyline. Thanks. It's probably why I rented this place." How long you've been living here? Since I came to the state, she turned to him. Wei Long, yes. When you asked me where I live, did I tell you? Yes, you did. Then why didn't you? You told me the address, but you fell asleep before you could tell me how to get there. She pursed her lips and shook her head. I am usually not this reckless. Wei Long smiled and. When Maylene saw his grin, she was even more embarrassed. She said, "You must think I'm a fool." "You're not a fool," he tenderly replied. "But will you tell me something?" She nodded. "Why did you drink so much?" Maylene was uncertain how to answer the question, so she stated the obvious: "I was celebrating Shuming's birthday by drinking alone." "What makes you think I was drinking alone?" I was watching you for a while before I showed up at your table. You were spying on me," he smirked. "I wouldn't put it that way." Mamie looked away and started to rub her arms. The smell was gone, but the room was getting cold. She asked, "What time is it?" Waylon looked at the clock hanging on top of the front door. "It's nearly three." He saw her shivering. "Let me make you some tea." Mamie shook her head and said. No thanks. I should be going. He turned to her and said, "Don't leave, please." I must. I shouldn't even be here. Yes, you should," he firmly said. His assumption irritated her. Why? She asked. He sighed. It is the only way that I know you will be safe, at least for the night. His words sent a warm feeling through her chest. But she immediately blocked the feeling by changing the subject. Why didn't you see Shuming before she went on stage? He hesitated. Before reply, I only wanted to see you. Why? She regretted as soon as she asked. He softly looked at her. Do you remember that rainy night on the roof? She looked away, wanting to forget that ever happened. I wanted to tell you then. Tell me what? Stop being so curious. She cursed herself. He stepped closer to her. Mailing, I'm in love with you. For a moment, Mailing forgot how to breathe. She had suspected that night, with the way he grabbed her, she knew he wanted to tell her something, even if it was just by the way he stared at her. She took a step back and said, "Wei Long, you can't be. Why not?" He grimaced. Her voice softened. For one thing, I am much older than you. You don't even know how old I am. I know I'm not in my twenties. His arm folded, looking amused as she continued. And I'm married. For now, he murmured. What do you mean? Was he? 
that confident, or does he know something she thought? For now, he repeated firmly. As she shut her eyes and rubbed her forehead, she said wearily, I really need to go. She reached out her hand to him. Give me my keys. He stared at the palm of her hand and quietly said, No, you haven't recovered. Yes, I have, she replied defiantly, even though her head was still hurting. She could not stay another minute. Please, he pleaded, go back to sleep. No, give me the keys, she repeated, and extended her hand towards him even further. No, his voice turned coarse. Maylene clenched her teeth and shifted her eyes to the front door. I'll just get a cab. She rushed toward the door and was just about to reach the doorknob when he grabbed her shoulders, turned her around, and pressed her against the door. What are you doing? she shouted. Let me go, she struggled. He gripped even tighter. I can't. What do you mean you can't? Let go of me or I'll scream. He covered her mouth immediately, and she smacked his head with her purse. He did not react. She tried to smack him again, but this time he caught her purse yank it out of her hand and threw it across the room and before he could utter another word she slapped his face with her emptied hand for a moment the air was still Mamie felt unease as she saw her handprint on his face he took a deep breath and quietly said it's not safe to leave right now you are still intoxicated Please, relax. As if she finally heard him, Mayling closed her eyes and slowly tilted her head down. She still did not feel right staying, but she knew she was not coherent enough to leave. Her inner turmoil began to surface, and her body began to tremble. Mayling felt her eyes begin to burn, and her nostrils began to soar. Waylon watched her briefly and gently lift her chin up. He grimaced as he saw tears streaming down her face. He gently held her cheeks and wiped them with his thumbs. Then he leaned over and kissed her. This time she did not resist.